The FT3ER is a very, very good radio which packs many features and functionalities. APRS is one of those features. And APRS has a lot of uses involved in emergency communications, location beacons, amateur radio contacts, and many more. Because of the complexity of the FT3DR, some of those features can be a little overwhelming. But I've read through the advanced manual and I've played and tweaked with them all so you don't have to. So today, we are going to tackle everything one at a time and at the end of this, you're going to be a master of APRS communications with your FT3ER. So just in case you're unaware, let's get a few concepts we're going to be using in this video out of the way. A digipeter is pretty much like a voice repeater. It takes digital radio packets and then it sends them over its area. Uh, the only difference is really it's not full duplex. So it takes the packet in, it interprets it, and then it repeats it over the area. An iGate, often bound with a digipeter, is a system, internet linking system which takes digital radio packets and forwards them to online services. With an iGate, you can do things like text message, email, send your upload beacons to uh, APRS.fi, which is a global APRS network that on, uh, uploads everything onto the web so you can see other stations in real time. So with those concepts out of the way, let's so go ahead and get started in T3DR. The first thing you're going to want to know is that APRS modem uses the B-band. You're also going to want to know the APRS frequency uh, of the location you're in. I'm in the United States, so the frequency used is 144.390. I have this programmed in as a memory channel, however you can also program it or put it on the VFO and type it in this way. But you're going to want that frequency on the bottom. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and just delve into the settings. So we're going to hit the display and APRS. And I'm going to start from the top. APRS AF Dual. This option will allow you to listen to FM radio and APRS at the same time. APRS destination. This is something you really don't need to worry about. It's kind of just built into your radio to tell your the APRS network what kind of device that uh, the APRS packet is coming from. APRS filter. So whenever you receive an APRS packet, you can choose to not show them on screen or interpret them. Uh, this right here, um, it's just different types of APRS beacons that you can get in. If you'd like to change one, you can hit the display button and then rotate your knob to turn it on or off. I like personally having all of these settings back in here. The APRS modem. Here is one of the options that you have to toggle on to actually turn on APRS functionality for your radio. By default it's off, but you can rotate your knob here and you'll have 1200 and 9600 the standard is 1200, most often used for 2 meter uh, APRS connections, which is most often what you're going to be using. However, some satellites and 440 uh, digipeters uh, in sparing areas uh, might use 9600. Most often times though, you're going to want to stick with the 1200 BPS. APRS message flash. Here you can select how long uh, your APRS uh, message will last or if you'd like to not show it up at all uh, for the flashing whenever you receive a new APRS message. APRS message group uh, is used with uh, Yesu's uh, GM function. I don't really use that uh, and it's not really used much in the amateur community. So most in, uh, unless you get into the advanced stuff, you can leave the setting one. APRS message text. So here, if you would like to have uh, quick text messages that you can just plug in and send to specific stations, you can go ahead and uh, put in your message here and uh, all you would have to do is select number one, two, or three and just send it right over. APRS mute. If you would like APRS, uh, the frequency to be muted, uh, you can do so. I like hearing the radio packets come over to determine reception. Either way, it will still receive and interpret APRS packets. APRS pop-up. So whenever a message comes in and it pops up on screen, this is how long you would like for it to pop up. Uh, I keep everything here at the default, but you can change it uh, to longer or shorter times depending on what type of APRS beacon is coming in. APRS ringer. This is the, uh, the little audio tone that uh, signifies that an APRS message just came in. Once again, I keep all these on the default, but if you would like, maybe you have uh, an abundance of weather stations in your area and your radio keeps it beeping, you can always just turn that off. A PRS unit is the distance or the measurements. I keep all these uh, pretty much as the default. I like having everything in miles. 
uh, miles per hour and everything being in America. Um, but I keep all these default. This is really just preference type thing. APRS TX delay. So after receiving a message, this is the TX delay uh, to reply and send your acknowledge uh, packet. So whenever you receive APRS packets, the system has an uh, automatic uh, uh, packet re um, reply in place that will say, hey, I've received that packet, and you can change that if a digit peter in your area has a long um, tail at the end of their APRS packet, which would uh, make it to where you can't transmit back in time. Beacon info. So uh, APRS automatically transmits beacons ever so often depending on your settings. Uh, ambiguity will uh, pretty much randomize your locations where uh, it won't exactly show the exact uh, coordinate that you're on. You can also choose if you want to show your current speed and your current altitude. Beacon interval. So there's three different settings for beaconing on APRS uh, for the FT3D. This right here is uh, only applicable if you're using the manual type, which we'll get into later, or the automatic type. So you can rotate your knob here and change if your beacon is set to automatic, how often it will beacon. I have mine set to two minutes. Your beacon status text. So whenever your APRS uh, transmits a beacon, you can have text that goes along with that beacon. I have mine set to, uh, if you hit display on text one and this display again, you can edit the text and you can change it. I just pretty much have my on 146.520 megahertz listening. You can also put different text. So if you hit display once on text, you can change it um, and put new text in. So this right here is what I use for the ISS whenever I'm transmitting off its digipeter. But for now, I'll keep it at five or uh, 520 listening. Next is your beacon TX. So this is where I was talking about before where you change the type of beacon that you have. So right now I have mine set to smart. What we changed the configuration before was auto. So auto is, means it would transmit every two minutes as per my, um, my setting before. Manual means that you have to actually hit the function key and hit beacon TX, which I'll show you in just a moment. And smart beacon uses different data, such as your current speed and direction, to determine when would be a smart time to send a new beacon uh, if enough stuff has changed. Com port setting. So you can actually use your radio uh, as uh, GPS coordinates out. And this right here would be where you... Um, you turn that functionality on at. You can plug your radio in, uh, into a computer and use different uh, APRS applications and use your radio as the GPS for those applications. Your Digipeter path has to do with how your APRS packet is retransmitted when it hits Digipeters. The standard at the moment is P3, which is wide 1, wide 2 dash 1. So that means your, your packet will be Digipeted twice. Uh, that means you have maximum. Uh, chances of getting digipeted into a uh, eye gate somewhere, which is the ultimate goal uh, in my case. So after P1, 2, and 3, you have your own that you can customize. In P4, I have my own path set in, and you can just hit display and edit the path just as you would anything else in the radio. I'm using path 4 as the ISS digipeter settings. So uh, when you digipede a packet off the uh, space station, the only way you can do so is if you have ARISS in your, in your address one. So I had to make that custom. But if I'm using Earth stations, I will just keep it at P3. GPS setup. So this is if you want to change your uh, GPS settings, I really recommend that you just ch uh, keep this um, uh, by default. There's not really a reason to change that. GPS power. So this is the second thing that you really need to have APRS uh, modem working. So you need to have this on and you need to have your APRS modem on. So once you turn the GPS on, it will not beacon unless you um, actually acquire GPS signal unless you have manual uh, settings set, which we'll get into. GPS time set, most often times you want to keep this enabled. So the time uh, that your radio gets is from the GPS. If for some reason you wanted to put in a different time, you can uh, you can rotate your knob and put manual. But most oftentimes, GPS is going to be the most accurate time system, so you'll want to keep it like that. GPS unit. 
Uh, basically just more measurements. Uh, you want to keep that uh, by default or if you'd like to change it you can. Your call sign. So this is uh, this is an important part. So if you're not familiar with APRS it's always your call sign hyphen and then a number specifying what type of station you are. So once you actually get over to that number you can change that but here I'm going to show a list on the uh, the screen here of different types of stations. You're, uh, you'll most likely want to be Dash 7 because that's going to be like pretty much your handheld station. Uh, and if you're using the FT3D, most often times that's what you're going to be. But if you'd like to use something else, you can choose something that's on the screen here. So my position. Uh, this is going back to where I was talking about acquiring GPS. Most often times you'll want to get your GPS uh, position. Uh, but if you know you're going to stay at home all the time, you can actually set that to manual, manually put in your latitude and longitude, and uh, that way you don't have to use battery on um, your GPS receiver. You can also uh, select different um, preset positions that you can put in. You can have one for home, one for work, and that type of thing. But I like to just use the GPS and let that uh, do it for me. Next is going to be your symbol. So there's a there's quite a few different symbols that you can choose from uh, for APRS, but I'll also put a list on the screen here of different symbols that you can use. Most oftentimes you might want to use a human or person if you're using HT, but if you're in a vehicle you can change it to a car or whatever really fits uh, the need that you have right now. The next thing is going to be your position comment. So you can select your comment here and uh, I just you can also have a custom comment. I usually just keep mine off duty, but you can select that uh, however you like. It really doesn't uh, affect the functionality too much. So smart beaconing, which is a setting that we have for our radio, uh, we are uh, there's there's three different types. So if you hit display here, you can change it between type one, type two, and type three. Usually these change typically on how fast you're going. So if you're driving on the interstate, you would want to stay in type one. If you're uh, going like maybe a medium speed, maybe you might want to be in type 2. And type 3 is really reserved for uh, walking, that type of thing. So uh, this right here will, if your beaconing setting is set to smart beaconing, then this is what determines how often you transmit depending on what uh, speed you're going. So I'm going to leave mine in type 2. I've actually custom modified this to be walking and then the other one to be the interstate. Uh, so this right here just transmits pretty often. So the last thing is your time zone. So the way the time zone works is it's your U it's measured in UTC time and you can actually put in your local time by subtracting or adding the difference that you are in UTC time. So I know that I am four hours behind UTC time so I can switch the knob there and hit back and my time zone will be set correctly. So going back, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to manually send an APRS beacon. I happen to have my own Digipeter iGate next door so I know I'm gonna get a reply here it might not sound clean but if you hit your uh, your F your function key here and you go to the second page you're gonna see a little beacon TX just tap that and your APRS will automatically send a beacon and that right there was a reply from my iGate Digipeter so that right there would just upload my GPS information and uh, my beacon status text and send it to the Digipeter and then my Digipeter would repeat that over the area. So if I wanted to send a message I can hit my function key here. I can hit message list and we'll go to just a blank message here and I'm going to hit reply. Actually, I'll hit this button right here and I'll hit message edit. So right here, uh, the first thing you want to do is hit edit text. And this right here is going to be uh, the message itself. So if you hit this right here again and you hit edit CS, then this right here is going to be editing the call sign. So you would type in the call sign and uh, you would hit back. And then you would hit edit text. You would type in the message, hit back. And then finally you would hit this message TX here and that would send the message. You can also go through your messages and open prior ones. This right here is where I was playing with the ISS and I was getting messages back and forth. If you'd like to see the current stations that you've received, you can hit this button here and then hit 
uh, S list, and that's going to show you all the stations. So the most current one is uh, my eye gate, so I can hit display on that to display its information, and it will show it to you, to me relative to me. And I can also hit raw and see the actual APRS packet uh, in its rawest form. So that's pretty much everything you need to know. Um, if you'd like to disable APRS, there's uh, only one thing you really need to do, which is turn off the modem. Uh, if you're not using a GPS, it does use power, so I really highly, highly recommend you go to GPS power and turn that off as well. So that's pretty much it, it's that simple. Uh, you should be able to do everything that you need to with APRS, and you should be able to be up and running at this point. If you like this video, Make sure you hit the subscribe button down there below. Uh, it's really important. It really helps me out and kind of see what kind of videos everybody likes. And make sure, comment below uh, any type of questions you might have for this because I will be responding to those and trying to answer as much as possible. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the video and you all have a good one. 73.